I told you the symptom depends on how rapid the sodium level falls. You know, um, so if it falls, say from one thirty to one twenty within, say for within twenty four hours due to some reason, then the symptoms are must going to be much more severe. Whereas sodium has been falling over many weeks or months, then then the, then the brain has this ability to adapt to this uh, falling sodium, and they they are going to be asymptomatic. So initial symptoms uh, would be like. anorexia nausea headache and later on if the sodium is not corrected or you know or if the sodium is uh, drop suddenly then those people have more severe symptoms like confusion lethar lethargy seizures um coma and finally they may go into coma right so um one second one second Uh, give me one moment so um so severe neurological symptoms the patients can develop like seizures and coma the sodium goes down suddenly or if the sodium goes down to a very low level okay so um um so so why do they develop these uh, severe neurological symptoms of uh, seizures and uh, coma because whenever there is uh, like excess of water extra cellular water it can enter into the cells causing cerebral edema which is the cause of seizures so management depends on whether the sodium is kind of uh, has dropped suddenly or slowly so whenever there is a um, sudden drop in sodium within 48 hours then you want to do a rapid correction right and that's when you would use hypertonic saline 3% saline right so isotonic saline is 0.9% and hypertonic saline is 3% saline right so um, so hypertonic saline is not is not to be used lightly or taken lightly it has to be used in only in those patients where there is an acute drop in sodium or there is a neurological symptoms right so um as we just discussed we just we discussed the flow chart isn't it so the treatment depends on the underlying cause So look for presenting symptoms. Look at whether the sodium has dropped acutely or you know slowly, and uh, also the state of hydration of the patient, whether he is hypovolemic, euvolemic, or hypervolemic, right? And replace sodium and water at the same rate as they were lost. If they if the sodium uh, got down slowly, then you would also replace the sodium slowly, right? right so um how much would you reduce how much sorry how much would you increase um do you, if the sodium is 110 what's your goal how fast you should treat uh you should, can you take your own sweet time or you should be how 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 much of an emergency is it and how much saline do you give or whether you give 3% saline or how much you give right so um see i mean the different ways of doing it but you know um these days uh, the latest guidelines have also recommended these boluses of uh, 3% uh, saline uh, 100 ml over 10 minutes which we do very rarely we rarely boluses of 3% saline is required very rarely most of the time we would start it at a fixed rate for example there are some formula available for this but most of the times we would start it at like say 10 ml per hour and then repeat the sodium very frequently every 4 to 6 hours and address the rate accordingly so suppose you started 3% saline say at 10 ml per hour and the sodium went up say from 115 to 125 that is too fast so you would stop the 3% saline and put put them back on isotonic saline right so but here i have given what the latest guidelines are which is not usually boluses are usually not required in most of the cases right um but you can do it if the the patient has seizures and very low sodium is uh, is seen right with less severe symptoms you can start 
patient on 3% saline, 0.5 to 2 ml per kg per hour, right? Frequent lab monitoring is very important, right? This is the most important thing. Please, please just don't start in 3% saline and then see the patient the next day, say bye, and then you come back the next day, then that, then you're in trouble, right? So this is 3% uh, saline has to be monitored. It's like, you're going to, you, you have to stay on top of the electrolytes whenever your patient is on 3% saline. You just can't forget about the patient and go to bed, you know. Uh, check it every, at least books mention every, you know, every two hours, four hours, which is very, very difficult to do in our setting. Uh, so I would suggest at least every six to eight hours you should check, right? So these are the formula. I don't want you to remember this formula um, as of now, but the formula are available whereby you can, uh, decide how much 3% saline to give at what rate, okay? For the benefit of, benefit of time, I won't go through this in detail, but the formula can also be used. But most of the time we don't even, you know, um, need the formula for most of the patients. Um, as I said, we, we, we decide whether it is acute drop or a chronic hyponatremia, and then we start accordingly approximately would start at 10 ml to 15 ml of 3% uh, NS and, and, measure, um, and measure sodium every six to eight hours. So why should you um, correct it slowly? Because of this, osmotic demyelination syndrome. Initially, it used to be called central pontine myelinolysis, right? Uh, but now with the latest terminology, it's called osmotic demyelination syndrome, right? Um, so this is because the brain doesn't like rapid shifts, rapid shifts in the sodium because it has already got adjusted to a low sodium state. And if you suddenly disturb it by a rapid increase, then that's why that's when you get into problems, right? So uh, this, this condition develops two to six days. It doesn't develop immediately, but it develops two to six days after the rapid correction, uh, inappropriate correction. And then they develop plastic quadriplegia like you know, uh, both the arms and legs go weak. They may develop pseudobulbar palsy, like dysphagia, dysarthria, encephalopathy. All of this um, can happen in the brainstem, most frequently in the brainstem, right? You need MRI. MRI would uh, show us the demyelination, which is uh, happening in, in the brainstem, especially pons, right? And, it's, it's a, and, the, and, the, and the bad thing and the sad thing is that this is uh, irreversible. There's nothing much we can do once they develop uh, this condition. So prevention is better than cure, right? So who are more prone for osmotic demyelination? People, alcoholics, people with chronic liver disease, malnutrition, and, and the lesser the sodium, more likely to uh, develop uh, osmotic demyelination.